So we're going to surprise my dad's cousin Dick, who we know, uh, who's just happens to be on holiday here. I just happened to be chatting to my cousin Dan. He said, oh, where are you now? I said, Mallorca. He said, no way! As he, Dan, and his brother Sam and their families were flying out to Mallorca to surprise Dick and Sue. That's their mum and dad, who were on holiday. I think I've made it way more complicated than it was. Anyway, a few more messages back and forth, and we couldn't believe that we were anchored right next to their hotel. So we were off to also surprise Dick and Sue. That's lovely, isn't it? Randomly messaged oh, on Monday last week. So now we're here. We've been here for a week. That was how long we've been here. You look beautiful. Oh, you've come here. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> see you. Let me see you. We had such a lovely evening catching up with everyone and we got a lightning show. Dick and Sue brighten up every room they enter. You can't help but smile when you're with them. Plus, Dick is so like my dad, so the kids just love him. <laughs> Do it again. Whoa, that was the fun, that was lightning. What's it? <laughs> the next day, we said goodbye to our German friends as they were turning around and going back towards Germany. We will really miss these guys. Cruising life means fast-paced relationships. You make friends quickly, share some life-changing, intense and unforgettable moments, and then before you know it, you're going your separate ways. We were off to, but only round the corner for the day. A change of scenery with a few buddy boats. Hey, we've got a much better problem. So we borrowed John's spade a few weeks ago and we've had a few nights of fairly big blow in the nautical sense. And uh, yeah, just trying to get it up. And it's definitely been a bit, like definitely dug in heavy. Like it, like proper went, oh, as it sort of jammed up a little bit trying to get the anchor up. So anyway, I think we're nearly there now. But, like, that's a good thing. Fantastic. Oh, anchoring's a new thing. I didn't take much footage, but we saw some wild goats, had fun on the beach, and then headed back round to Palenka, where we had a guest coming, and we were very excited. What? Goats? Exactly that. They're beautiful. Look at those. That's another animal to our list. What are you excited about? Music in Leventon, and now he's in Mallorca, uh, just up here somewhere. This might be him. It's a very real possibility. This is Kelvin. If you have followed us for a while, you will know who he is. I have been in bands with Kelvin for about 20 years. He is a big part of our family and he sailed with us many times. He broke his femur last year and it's taken him till now to get fit enough to feel confident that he can get around the boat. What's in Kelvin's bag? What's in Kelvin's bag? Hey! How many females? Eight. Now you've been collecting them for over a year. That's over a year's worth of females you own now. These were Christmas presents that had been sent to us in Portimao last year, but they didn't make it. We had lost hope when they turned up back at my parents' house, and now Calvin had brought them with him. Also in his bag, lots of rocks, orange squash, pickle, a new GoPro, and 
a new Five Go Sailing flag. Oh, we need to get it hung up, hung it right up. That's a much better size, isn't it? Who will see that from miles away? It's not okay. <laughs> Yeah, much better size. It had been really lovely weather for a few days, but now it was turning. It was such a shame as my cousins wanted to come and see the boat, but the weather did not make things very easy for them. This is the footage my cousin took. I'll let him tell the tale. Us Elliots love a good story. So me and my amazing brother have uh, decided to go out on our cousin's boat this morning after getting in at 4am and it is choppy as. Look at that. It's been beautiful for three days and now it's looking like that. This is going to be hell. Oh my god. This is going to be an experience. Here's our lift. There she is. Alright cuz. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> they got absolutely soaked. Luckily, the sea is really warm. <laughs> We're still going. <laughs> Unfortunately, Sam hasn't got any sea legs. So no sooner as he arrived, but he said, oh, would you mind taking me back to shore? So I did. Yeah, so we've had to cut it short, sadly. Uh, old uh, seaman. <laughs> then only a few hours later, the sun was back out again. We were back in the water. Not only did Sam get seasick, but Dan dropped his sunglasses overboard. The kids were determined to find them, and guess what? They did. This anchorage keeps on giving. I love watching the seaplane train. It's coming right down. Other things we did whilst Kelvin was here, played music. Then we took him to explore the town. We've come to the Chino. It's Kelvin's first Chino experience. This is a little one. I feel like we're going to underwhelm him, but still, everyone loves the Chino Bazaar, right? Wow. We had ice creams. These are all thanks to Kelvin's mum and dad. Thanks, Linda and Bill. Yeah. 
fish that won't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. It definitely won't. <sighs> Don't go dead. The next day was a big day for Esperance. Remember the slow leak that we have and the disaster trying to get lifted out round the other side of the island? Well, we had found a place that could lift Esperance out of the water so that our insurance company could get their surveyor to inspect. Kelvin and some of the other boaters decided to go along for the ride. Thanks Hans, Dave and Kelvin. Due to the configuration of the travel hoist, the crane, we had to take the backstays off. We only have a few threads left. The yard guys knew their stuff. With the backstays off, Esperance just, like, just fit. Inches to spare under the keel and between our travel hoist beam and the topping lift. Once out of the water, we had the hull jet washed. Our insurance company paid for a complete hull clean so that their surveyor could inspect the two inches around the P-bracket. Win. With the clean done, Juan, our appointed surveyor, took a look at the P-bracket. It all seemed in good condition. Seeing Esperance out of the water is always a reassurance of what we have bought. After a bit more discussion, Hugh discussed with Juan Chris's suggestion of how the water was getting in. Remember Chris? He sorted out our gearbox in our Merimar. Chris is from Sailing Ragdoll, and when he's not sailing and starring in their own YouTube channel, he is also working full-time from his boat as a naval architect. The wealth of knowledge that Chris has shared with us over the course of this cruising summer has been invaluable. So Chris's suggestion was that when the rope wrapped around the stern gear and loaded up the prop shaft momentarily before being cut by the rope cutter, the resulting jolt was enough to break the bond between the stainless steel of the P-bracket and the glass fibre of the hull. With this discussed, Juan investigated further and confirmed that this was correct. Can you see here his metal rule sliding up between the polyester hull and the metal P-bracket? This is the route the water is taking as it seeps on board. So, with the issue identified and the cause confirmed, on to the fix. Juan was happy that the hull was in great shape and that there was nothing to worry about. The advice was to grind it back and reseal with epoxy or Sikaflex on the next routine haul out. And in the short term, just seal it up with some underwater epoxy to try and stem the leak. We then only had a few moments before time was up and the boat had to be relaunched. But Hugh, in his normal spendthrift way, used this extra time to see how many boat jobs he could squeeze into the smallest time possible. back in the water and the backstays were reattached. Then we took advantage of the marina facilities and filled it with water. Meanwhile, the kids and I were having a lovely time as we got taken to lunch by Dick and Sue. Well. 
don't feel too sorry for Hugh, Kelvin, Dave and Hans. They also went out for lunch. They had the meal of the day and it was only 10 euros each. They walked through the marina and Hugh found another endurance. And then, with a clean bum, they enjoyed a beautiful sail back to the anchorage, including a couple of extra tacks to eke it out. So, we're back on anchor after a very successful morning. Uh, all good, the kids are in the water, Hans and David have left. Uh, me and Kelvin has had a good natter, sat with a drink, cooling down, and I'm about to go and start my day's teaching. But, so yeah, Chris on Ragdoll, he's over there. Uh, when I asked his advice a few weeks ago about what we thought the damage was on his boat, uh, he basically reckoned, took a reckoning of what's gone on, and he appears to be Bob on right. Basically, the P rack is taking a bit of a knock. It's very slightly unseated itself from the fiberglass. The fiberglass itself is in great condition, all fine, not delaminated, all solid, but the um, just where the stainless steel just slightly slid away from it, um, almost like a, like a shaft inside a, inside a hole. <laughs> and the water's just ingressing on the side and the surveyor confirmed that. So what we're gonna do is recommend a very simple fix, get some underwater epoxy, just bung it up for now, monitor it until we're next out of the water and then do a full fix then, which is exactly what we're gonna do. So I'm just gonna order some underwater epoxy uh, in the next few weeks and get that sorted. And which is great, so that's a load off, but fabric as a whole, the structure, all the fiberglass, it hasn't delaminated, it's all solid. And he looked around all the prop stuff and said, no, nope, that's all very well built, all solid, it's a good thing. It's a bit of a unique, odd build, but he said it's all good. The boat's safe, it's all solid, so no worries. Which is a massive load off. And then we had a lovely um, meal of the day at the local restaurant there, Fif about 15 euros, got three courses and a drink, ridiculous, and it was really good, so that was nice. And then we had a glorious sail back, just a dad's sail home, which was lovely. And we sort of, rather than come straight back, we did a few tacks and the boat was, because you've got a brand new clean bottom, she was flying, we did like seven knots at one point, just like in like light winds, it was glorious. So um, yeah, Esperance doesn't do that very often. So feeling good about life, which is nice. And then not only that, we did a proper anchor dig in, I like hands in his proper American way, but he had full revs, the boat was hammering in reverse and the anchor was properly dug in. So I'm looking forward to diving on the anchor later and seeing how it looks. But for now, I'm going to, um, uh, Go and start my day's work because today is Tuesday. I do five to nine. You heard me, not nine to five, five to nine. That's not too bad, is it? <laughs> a lovely day had by all, and the result we wanted. Esperance would be fine, and the bill would not be too hefty overall. Hooray for not sinking. <laughs>